Hi, everyone. So I'm, I'm Jonathan from Repair Together, which is the um, uh, Wallonian and Belgian uh, network for repair cafes. Um, I want to talk today about uh, planned obsolescence and with you. Um, the idea is to present concrete cases of uh, planned obsolescence I've encountered during my repairs because I'm a repairer and I'm also an engineer. Uh, and we, we did this um, uh, study with um, a colleague, which is an um, industrial uh, designer. Um, and so, yeah, we, we wanted to show what's uh, really planned obsolescence, uh, in our opinion. Uh, the idea is that you have um, little papers, and then you, you can vote each time. When I present a case, you will be able to vote if you think it's planned obsolescence or not. Um, so you decide, I don't, but I have my ID. Um, and we will start uh, directly with uh, what do you think uh, between those cases? Uh, which one is uh, planned obsolescence according to you? So we have a, a chip that counts prints in a printer, uh, a product that changes its design every year, uh, my jeans that are wearing at the crotch, so it's here, uh, and a manufacturer who complexifies the shape of the screw heads on a product. So you can take your papers and vote. What you think for you, it's planned obsolescence. Okay, a lot, a lot of A's, A's, a few B's, and each, each one of them. Okay, thank you. Mm. It's working now. Okay, so, um, so uh, we, we came uh, with a definition with my colleague uh, Simon, uh, which is a more detailed definition uh, oriented by his uh, designer point of view. Uh, and so it says, uh, planned obsolescence refers to the set of techniques by which a product and its nominative duration they are deliberately reduced from its conception without any advantage for the consumer, thus limiting its duration of use to increase its replacement rate. So um, we will take the um, highlight uh, uh, parts. So it's the set of techniques that uh, reduce the normative duration. So a normative duration is like the, the, the duration, the, the lifetime it should have. Um, and uh, the idea uh, behind that is to increase uh, the replacement rate. So that's, that's quite uh, okay for us. And then uh, we come with uh, four kinds of planned obsolescence. So you can find a lot of kind of planned obsolescence, but those are the, uh, the, the kind uh, we uh, like uh, to, to talk about. So the um, a planned obsolescence stricto sensu, which is the... Uh, uh, yeah, strictly speaking, uh, planned obsolescence, when you talk about planned obsolescence, is that one. Uh, it's like uh, when you have a, a technical uh, problem on a, on a device, uh, when it's a component that is failing or something like that. You have indirect uh, planned obsolescence. Those are all the methods that prevent uh, an object from lasting longer. So like uh, complexifying screws, uh, heads, um, like spare parts availability. Um, for a very short, long, uh, short time, or spare part too expensive, and stuff like that. Uh, then uh, we, you have planned obsolescence by incompatibility. So that's the methods um, when uh, so you need to pur purchase a new object because uh, the, the the one you are using is no longer compatible. Uh, we we are uh, uh, we, we we have that with smartphones uh, essentially with the um, uh, updates. Uh, then you cannot use an old smartphone because you have uh, updates that are slowing it too, down too much. Um, but also accessories that are not compatible. So like if IKEA uh, came with um, like a new... Um, um, <laughs> sorry, uh, armoire? <laughs> a shell? Yeah, but you, so you have to, those with a lot of boxes. And if they change like one centimeter, uh, you, you will not be able to use all your, your accessories. So that's a kind of um, a planned obsolescence too. And then the psychological uh, planned obsolescence. So it's like um, when uh, we motivate you to buy something new because there is a new color or uh, you absolutely need a new one. Um, yeah. Uh, so maybe you can vote now which kind of planned obsolescence you encountered uh, the most. 
So stricter sensu, so the, the technical one, uh, the indirect planned obsolescence uh, by incompatibility or uh, psychological obsolescence. Okay, and uh, those who are uh, at the back, you can uh, grab, grab uh, on, on the chairs here. Okay, so we have a lot of Ds, uh, a bit of Cs, and one B, I think. Um, so as we see, we don't encounter uh, a lot of uh, technical planned obsolescence, but it's the most uh, famous one. Uh, and we have a lot of psychological planned obsolescence. I, I think myself too, it's that one that I encounter the most because um, yeah, it's uh, everywhere. You have the, the, the marketing and stuff, so yeah. Um, so we are going uh, to inside the, the problematic things, so concrete cases, and I will start with coffee machines. Um, so I have here uh, an example of a, of a Sensio coffee machine, and um, we have uh, a lot of problems with uh, the little uh, yellow box uh, on it, On this one is the blue one, um, which is a capacitor, and um, this one is constantly, constantly powered up. Uh, and it, it will uh, tear down like in approximately two years if you let the, um, the device plugged. Um, so the big problem uh, with that is, uh, is that you, so this is a, another picture. Um, the, the big problem with that is, um, is that they are saying it in the user manual. They are saying you have to unplug your uh, coffee machine when you are not not using it, uh, but who is reading uh, user manuals? Always. Yeah. Always. Is the only one? Yeah. You are not reading it. You, you... Does coffee machine come with the user manual? <laughs> okay. And um, uh, so. Yeah, that, that, that's a, a big problem. And in fact, uh, they could have uh, think about it and avoid this part to uh, be destroyed. Yeah. The problem, which means after you hear the water gets out, the passes like the bad part that the water is out. And use the microphone. They use bad parts, so the water rins after a year out. If you often use it, and use it often in, in short times, the water rins out after a year. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's another problem. They're yeah. doing bad parts in there. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's directly. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the big problem is this component is in fact, in fact that uh, when you are pushing the power on button, it's not uh, sorry, the power on off button, you are not powering, power, powering off. Uh, this component is always um, powered up. Uh, and the, 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 the producer, the, the manufacturer could have put a plug um, um, a switch before this component to avoid. Uh, so the solution is to buy uh, a switch by yourself. Um, and uh, um, moreover, it saves uh, electricity because in fact it, it consumes, it's consuming. Um, but uh, on the other hand, we have the manufacturers uh, is defending uh, himself. Um, and they have to balance, uh, have a balance between the cost and the quality of uh, their uh, product. Um, in Belgium, uh, at least, they are, um, uh, it's okay with the legal warranty of two years. It's respected. And um, uh, the solution is, is clearly in the user manual, but yeah, who, who is reading it? Um, so yeah, um, according to you, what do you think it is? Is this a clear case of planned obsolescence? Do you think it's a negligence from the manufacturer because they forgot to put a, um, a switch button? Uh, maybe it's a manufacturer e error, so yeah, they, they did a mistake. Uh, or it's not a case of planned obsolescence. Okay, you are, we are at the fixed fest, so a lot of green one. A, A, Bs, yeah. Yeah, maybe, but when you show them, um, the diagram, the electronic diagram to a, 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 um, an electronician is like, 
what the hell? <laughs> because it's like crazy the, that they don't they didn't put a switch there. But as, as you said, uh, you don't have to um, uh, blame planned obsolescence right away. You have other problems uh, with coffee machines. Uh, there can be problems with electronics, with the rest of the, um, the cardboard. Uh, we have problems with the pump. We have the problems with the three ways valve, which is a small uh, valve uh, behind it. And then we have a lot of maintenance issues. In fact, people are um, uh, maintaining their um, coffee machine with vinegar, which is not good. Uh, in fact, vinegar attacks the, um, um, so there, there is like um, a piece uh, of magnet uh, inside the water part, uh, which is moving when you have uh, water or not. And uh, with vinegar, it's um, uh, ex expanding, and then uh, it's, it blocks uh, like up or down. If it's down, uh, your machine says, uh, I have no water. If it's up, your machine is heating nothing, and then it, it breaks. So yeah, th those are the main problem with the, the coffee machine, but the, the capacitor is one, one of them. And usually repairs in repair cafes have those capacitors uh, in their bag because we replace a lot of them. Um, yeah, we have a, a, a guide to repair uh, Senseos, which is like uh, 100 pages of uh, cases of Senseos and how to repair it. So. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, like psychological planned obsolescence. If you want a different coffee machine, they, they all do the same bad coffee, but <laughs> they are like, this one is really nice with flowers. <laughs> okay, we have the same problem of um, uh, capacitors uh, on kitchen mixers. So it, this is a small case that came from a, um, a volunteer from a repair cafe in south of Belgium. So he, it, it has, he, he repaired um, a kitchen mixer uh, of 2011, and a, um, a few months after, he had to repair a kitchen mixer of 2015. And they changed the value of the capacitor um, of, uh, by 33% uh, between two, 2011 and 2015. So I was not at the marketing meeting, but maybe they said mm, it's long. It, it lasts a bit, uh, a bit long. Maybe we should um, reduce the, the value of the capacitor. Um, yeah, and, and so the, the, now uh, the kitchen mixer is failing after two years, which is, was not really the case uh, afterwards. Case Sorry. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, then I have. Um, a case about screens, so uh, we have a, an iMac there, an old iMac, um, and uh, we have also a case of capacitors, uh, but in fact the capacitors, uh, so the capacitors are, are those um, circular stuff, um, they are placed just um, next to the heating part, which is the power supply, so the gray part. I will show here because uh, you said it was beautiful, but <laughs> in fact, uh, this is heating a lot. So the, the picture is like this. This is heating a lot, and those are uh, really sensible to heat. And so um, when, uh, when it's too hot, they are going to, um, I always forgot how you say, they are going to blow. Uh, and uh, we, we, we see that, um, after what you will see, uh, on this one, we'll see that we see that the the, the close, closest one are totally blown, and the far the, those that are far they are okay. So probably um, they shouldn't have put it them there. Uh, we have uh, those kinds of problem of problem with um, televisions too. Uh, so um, uh, those pictures uh, in these pictures, um, it's the the heating part is uh, in metal there. It's the heat dissipator, so. It dissipate the heat from other components, uh, and it's placed next to capacitors, which will blow. Um, so we had that case a lot with uh, Samsung televisions, and uh, you have a lot of, um, so the, the, the capacitors are not working, um, but if you heat them, it's gonna work a bit. So you have a lot of um, video on the internet uh, with people heating their television with a hair dryer, and then it's going to work like five minutes, and then, it's not working anymore. Um, so the solution is to 
uh, to place the so it's, it's easy to say for 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 me because I'm not a, a designer, but you have to place the um, the components far from the heating part. Um, but uh, yeah, the the manufacturer is defending. Uh, so they 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 said about the capacitor that they had a supplier issue. Um, in fact, they were um, uh, buying capacitor in Japan, and then they 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 had to buy it in China because uh, the price was, were too high, and then uh, the quality went down. So too bad. Um, they, always, they always have to find the balance between the cost and the quality. Uh, the two-year uh, gu guarantee is respected. And uh, that case, uh, for speaking to um, uh, electronic engineers, it's r quite right. It's difficult to optimize the space on the circuit board because you have to respect a lot of uh, information and you have to, to choose where you put your components. And sometimes you don't have the choice, but still. What do you think? Is it planned obsolescence or not? So clearly a, a planned obsolescence, negligence, error. Negligence, you are kind. No, it's not a case of planned obsolescence. Yeah. I mean, it, it's also a question of the definition. Planned for me implies that it's, you know, on purpose. Yeah. Um, and I, I know of the motherboards, it's, it's difficult. You have so many things to consider, like interference, heat, it's just one of them, and separating the warm from the cold parts and so on. And I'm not sure if this is really on purpose, on design to, you know, to make things destroy themselves. I, I doubt that. OK. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, maybe. But we know from, the, uh, from Apple that they often design things so that they get often broken. They want products so bro broke fast. That's a firm philosophy. Thank you. Um, I think design engineering is essentially a balance of compromises and what these examples are showing is that very low down that priority list is long, long life. Yeah. It's, I don't think there's an intention to, maybe I'm, I'm being optimistic, but I don't think there's an intention to design in obsolescence. It's just that long life is an incredibly low priority on the design yeah, yeah. Uh, agenda. So these things are probably known, they're probably expected, but they're a low priority. <laughs> yeah. And behind you, you. Thank you. Uh, actually, I uh, used to work as a product design engineer, electronic product design. I used to design uh, PCBs for various different products. Yeah. And I can tell you that, at least in this case, I mean, you cannot move the capacitors too far away. Normally, in the power supply part, you are generating the vol different voltages that you need to use for the rest of the board. and You'd have to ideally have the capacitors as close to the pod where it's generated as possible. Yeah. But of course, there are things that they could do uh, within reason, but there's other uh, limitations like space and generating uh, and keeping EM EM EMC into account, the electromagnetic interference, or EMI, sorry. Um, but I've seen this problem a lot as well with uh, electrolytic capacitors, which are those, uh, the type that leak there. I think now a lot of people are moving more towards tantalum capacitors or uh, uh, called ceramic capacitors, yeah. high value ceramic capacitors that do not have a liquid inside. Then they, uh, they don't have the same issue because those capacitors have a liquid in between a roll of uh, material and that liquid can expand and then the capacitor yeah. blows up like that. So, uh, but I think, yeah, I think, like I said, I think more modern electronics, especially TVs, have less and less of those uh, ele electrolytic uh, capacitors because it is quite a common problem. Yeah, thank you. Yes, you should take the, the mic. Yeah, over here.
Just, just to say, I, I, uh, during my studies, I had a, a course where I, I had to choose materials, uh, and I always choose. Uh, you, you can choose parameters and put them on um, on um, a software, and it's saying uh, which one is the best for what you want to do. And uh, the parameters we had to put, there was always the cost every time, and. I know it's important the cost, but I hate it. I want to to, to build things that last, that not thing that breaks. So yeah, but we had to to think about it, and that's how the work the world is working, unfortunately. Yes. Uh, in the case you have presented, uh, would the capacity of uh, of the capacitor capacitor change a lot in the in term of uh, cost? For the manufacturer? It's like uh, cents. Uh, it's like not not that much, but they are uh, the less uh, the capacity, the less the cost. It depends on which capacitor, but those one yes. Uh, so um, if if they put uh, low value uh, capacitors, they they will uh, reduce the cost, and um, it's like um, scale economy, uh, scale economy, um, economy of scales. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and so they, they, they gain money with that. It means uh, the cost issue is an issue. Yeah, yeah. So they, they, they try to, to, to scratch where they can. Yes, but if it is a cost issue, then it's not, uh, yeah. it could be not uh, a case of plan obsolescence. Maybe. <laughs> because they have, yes, because they have their, their reason. So... They, they just explained that the, the product is less expensive for the, uh, for the consumer. So the consumer no, no, no. The, the price is the same. Yeah. Like the, the example of the, 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 the example of the mixer, it's like the same price between the, the two years, yeah. but uh, the, the capacitor is less effective. It means it, means it is not a reason. The cost, the cost reason is a, isn't, it can be accepted as uh, a, yeah. Uh, for, for my opinion, yes. But okay. I guess when you are a manufacturer, it's important. I guess you want to earn a lot of money. I, I, I yeah. can react to what you said. If it is a, a solution for, uh, for the problem, could we say that it is, uh, uh, it is a, a, a key effect of planned obsolescence? Because... Uh, uh, Every time you have you have shown a, a simple solution, it was very complicated to think about the solution. So, therefore, does it mean that it is a plan of in in a is it wrong? Yeah. Maybe it's another way of seeing it. It's not planned obsolescence, but it's a very low priority on long life. Yeah. And of course, the, there is no uh, really incentive for the producer to prioritize long life longer than two years. But uh, if he has as a byproduct something that looks as obsolescence, oh, let's go with that. Yeah. Anyone want to react again? Yeah. Yeah. Let's use another term. Um, let's use the term chosen obsolescence, right? Because you could say, well, they didn't plan the obsolescence, but they know it's going to happen, yeah. right? So they made a choice, right? So you could call it chosen obsolescence. Uh, the, 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 the session was called uh, premature obsolescence, and maybe that's a, a better term, but I don't like it because, like... I don't want it to be obsolete at yeah, all. I agree. You could argue they didn't plan obsolescence, but they chose they chose a path of action which caused obsolescence for other reasons. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? So, but if you want to call it, yeah, you're right. Yeah, premature obsolescence. Yeah, maybe. Not planned. Okay. Yes. Uh, again, uh, a reaction there. How about you? How about you? Uh, I would argue from a, from a manufacturer's perspective. I mean, I can tell you from the company that I was working with, uh, we were working in a market with a lot of competition. And our main focus as engineers were to divide, 
uh, develop a product that meets the features at the lowest possible cost possible. Like, and that is um, that was the main focus. And I'm sure that's a lot of the, most manufacturers' main focus. But I don't know if you can necessarily blame the manufacturers for that because that's consumers' behavior choosing often the lowest cost uh, device. I mean, often it's the case. I mean, I would say that if people are given a choice, if they're looking for something like a blender, and if there's two blenders that both have the features that they need, I think a vast majority of people will choose the cheaper blender. And so in that way, they, the manufacturers are incentivized to make the device as cheap as possible. And so then you can understand that they have to make compromises to achieve that low cost. And you know, that saving costs, saving cents on, on capacitors may not seem like much, but with all the other costs that come with it, and if there's 10 capacitors and each capacitor is two cents cheaper, um, then that's already 20 cents, uh, which is quite a lot on a product that might cost them only uh, 10 or 20 or 30 euros, something like that. So uh, I think that's also important to, I wouldn't say it's always the manufacturer's fault, you know. Maybe the problem is capitalism. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Question, why, are cons why do consumers behave like that? Because manufacturers sell on price, right? The manufacturers cause this, not the consumers, because the manufacturers created the market, right? Nobody was buying blenders before blenders existed, right? So when manufacturers started to say, oh, I've got a blender that's as good as their blender, but it's two cents cheaper, who did that? It wasn't the consumer, right? So it was the manufacturer who created the race to the bottom on price, right? Or the salespeople, whatever, right? I don't care what you say, but it wasn't the consumer. Consumers didn't even know that blenders existed at one point, right? And then it's market appears. Okay, so you've got a blender. So the next manufacturer comes along and says, ah, oh, I can make what appears to be the same blender for two cents cheaper, right? So it's the manufacturer's fault or it's the sales channel's fault. It's not the consumer's fault. They've been programmed into this behavior by the manufacturer. Yeah? Okay? Sorry. I, I, will, I will move on. Uh, yeah, you want to say? Uh -huh. On, on the, that, uh, uh, with that uh, argument, we could say, so, so uh, uh, worse the quality, so, uh, so uh, uh, um, less expensive a product, but this is not the case. So you have very good products which are less expensive than bad products. So therefore, I think it is, in fact, a, a choice from the manufacturer, but you have also the, 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 uh, the dimension of, of, of quality, which is not exactly uh, uh, the same like uh, uh, the, the, the cost and the price uh, issue. It is so simple. I mean, it is much more complex. It is, it is, uh, the issue is not so simple. I see. Is it on? Yeah. This time I'll get up. Uh, I'm also an engineer, a little bit older maybe, and our school was doing another kind of stuff when we, I was taught this. And I was taught that uh, it was an, uh, a design item uh, that could be used by companies that were either in a monopoly situation or in a duopoly situation. That is, they were in fact more or less controlling the market. That they could create a product where they knew that the quality will sink over time. Uh, the, the, the theory about this was, in fact, uh, something that, was, that came from Gillette and Wilkinson Sort, so it's called the Wilkinson Sort Sawtooth Curve of Quality. So you create a product with a quality, then over time it has a less and less quality, then they produce a new product, in fact, with the same quality as the original product, but now it's a damn new product, and the consumer, 
who owns the first product has to buy this one because now it has a very higher quality, which goes down and new product goes down, new product. And this is not something that is uh, coincident. I've been, I've been taught how to do this. And that was part of my engineering studies. Maybe not the part that I l was listening most to, but, uh, and, uh, but, but it also comes into social science that this can only be done if you have a monop monopoly and, uh, or a very dominant situation. I've still been using this sawtooth curve, but then I put Windows 95, Windows Me, Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, because that is definitely a good example of that shit. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, yeah, you want to say something? Yeah. Yeah, the name of the session is talk about planned obsolescence, so you are free to, to talk. <laughs> uh, I know from my brother, he's working for a bottle of electronics, they produce synthesizers. And, the, and he's a man, one of the men who do the last tests and uh, buy electronic parts. So sometimes he had to repair parts of um, Bang and Olufsen, Olufsen. And he said, outside they're very nice, but inside they're so bad, awful electronics. They buy the cheapest things and put it in. Only the, oh, Bang and Olufsen is fine, but under half years, you have got the problems outside and sometimes make it or it do not. You can repair it, but say another part is broken too much. Yeah. Thank you. So I, I want to talk about the other problems linked to uh, televisions. So as I said, the, the, the error from a supplier for the, the capacitors, I already thought that, but I think the problem is that they want to reduce cost, so the quality is reduced. Uh, and I have a big problem with smart television because um, it's really hard to repair a television. Maybe you can, but I can't. And it's, it's hard to find uh, volunteers that can repair television. Um, uh, but now we are creating smart television, which are computers and television uh, together. So we need two competencies. So we need to repair, uh, yeah, two things uh, separately in one object, and yeah, I, so, yeah, and we have the problem of um, uh, of uh, updates problem, and then yeah, you cannot choose your television anymore because the the, the computer inside is um, too slow, that's really bad, and maybe we should stick even if it's not working all the time, but with an HDMI cable. <laughs> That's better, and a computer. Um, so now I, I'm going to um, uh, shoot on the ambulance. Um, so the printers. Um, so a few printers had, uh, and it, it's quite well known, uh, had a, a chip that limits the number of prints. Um, it was Epson. They were, uh, they are, they were um, uh, charged for it in France. Uh, and probably other countries, I don't remember. Uh, but there are other problems linked to printers. Uh, it's the cartridge. Um, yeah, the, 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 the ink is incredibly uh, expensive. And we have the, this picture with, a, like, we compare it to Channel 5 because it's like uh, I have the, 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 the cost. It's four times uh, more expensive than uh, Channel 5. <laughs> Uh, perfume, so that that's crazy. And then, um, uh, yeah, you you have uh, in those you have a, ch a chip that rejects uh, the um, the cartridge if it's not the same brand than your machine. Um, sometimes uh, you have a print counter on, on some of them. Like uh, they they try in their lab, they are printing like black sheets, so entirely black, and they print it. Like, and when, when there are no more ink, they said, oh, okay, so it's like 100 sheet of paper, and I put that on my ship. And then when, when you print that amount of uh, prints, it's over, you cannot use uh, your cartridge, even if uh, you have like up to 40% of ink inside still. Um, so yeah, 
probably it's uh, less uh, costly than having like a, an optical um, device that can check if there is uh, ink in it. But yeah, still. Uh, so yeah, we, we have those kind of problem. And uh, in the um, uh, in the repair cafe, we have found a solution to that. So we can reset the ship. Uh, in fact, that is counting uh, impressions. Um, so you have this little device. I found it online. I never tested it. But we had um, like a, a Russian um, um, uh, software. Uh, and we can reset the chip with, with, the, with this one. Uh, and the other solution is to not buy a classical printer and uh, buy a one with uh, refillable cartridges. Um, yeah, um, and Epson maybe uh, in, um, to, to, to apologize <laughs> about their chip. Maybe they, they created this one that you can uh, refill yourself. Uh, but um, like in uh, August, I think they they were uh, in the center of the attention again because uh, people had uh, we talked about it yesterday. People had uh, an error, uh, like just a, a part of the printer is no more uh, working. Please throw your device away. It's like they said just that. <laughs> yeah, you want to say something? Uh, where is the microphone? Yeah, I just wanted to say something about the Epson printer because it's very close to my heart. I can t besides those issues, you also have the waste in disposal a tube that you have to add to the printer. You have to, re because every time that you clean the printer, it releases black ink. So you have to, and it fills up the pads. So you have to have find a, an external source to liberate the, the, the ink of the Epson. Yeah. And I can tell you one thing. With, with an Epson printer, once you put the, the continuous system, the Russian software and the waste, uh, you could probably print about 200,000 uh, pages with no problem. Yeah. If, you sustain, if, you, if you maintain that printer well, and I come from South America where everything is fixed, everything. And that printer is a tank of a printer. Once you understand how it works, something that costs absolutely very little money can be a, such a, an incredible machine of, of, yeah, I just wanted to say that about the Epson. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah, we have the manufacturer's uh, defense. Um, so th those are uh, real uh, defense we, we found uh, in articles. So um, the remaining ink is to uh, protect the head of the printer, so yeah. Um, the print counter is to avoid the saturation of the cleaning pad. But as we said yesterday, uh, if, if you go, you see the cleaning pad, you, you remove it, you put a new one, and then it should work. But it's not because you have a, a print counter. Um, and then, uh, yeah, they are counting droplets, not impressions. Uh, yeah, they said that. I'm not sure. Uh, and then the, the best one is um, they adapted their tolerances to all environments so that like you can print in the desert and in tropi tropical uh, spaces if you want. That's nice because if you want to print in the desert, you, you have enough, uh, <laughs> enough ink in your uh, cartridge. So um, if you want to, to, to vote maybe, uh, is this a, a case of planned obsolescence or maybe a case of planned obsolescence? Ah, sorry, I got the wrong one. Okay. So they, they, were, they were sued in, in France for that. So I guess you can vote A, but you, you can choose still. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a clear case. I, I like... Uh, I like what we talked about uh, in the case before because the, the ideas talk about it because it's never clear, but they are um, real. Uh, we are got, we real um, justice choose. <laughs> they said it was so. Um, so. Sorry, I have a problem about my pictures. Um, so the next um, thing I want to talk about is chargers. Uh, I, I, I don't know if you have that, but uh, every time um, you have a charger, it breaks at the same uh, place. It's like uh, at the end of it. 
because probably we are uh, rolling it too much. But it's always the same problem, and I don't know why they are not doing something about it. Sorry? Yeah, I do know, but uh, I have to say I don't know. Um, and yeah, it's always the, the same problem, and it's for my MacBook chargers, well, I found a, a solution now, but it's quite difficult to, to open it because it's uh, hot glued, um, and it's really difficult to open it. Um, so yeah, uh, we have those kind of problem, but uh, we have solutions. Uh, so uh, Apple came with uh, this um, charger where you can uh, replace the, 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 the cables. So that's nice. You, you can uh, uh, change the USB one. You, you can change, change the other one. So that's, that's a nice solution. Uh, you can uh, have a stronger cable. They, they could uh, do that, I guess. Um, and you can reinforce your uh, cable. Uh, that's nice with um, a self. Um, I don't know the, the name in um, in English. So yeah, shrink, shrink tube. Thank you. Uh, and maybe um, um, okay. Uh, this one there. Uh, it's a spring. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, yeah. And so you you can do do that to to reinforce it. Um, yeah, uh, that, that's all I, I have to say about that. But uh, again, the manufacturers, um, they always have the same problem between cost and quality. Uh, they say that uh, the user neglects their um, devices. And I think that's right. We, we are always like, uh, and then we are uh, throwing it. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the manufacturing processes are faster when you hot glue things, so that's why they do this. And then they talk about security because uh, so it's hot glued, so you cannot open it. It's difficult to open, but it's for your security. Okay, please uh, believe me. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know what to think about chargers. Maybe you have something to say. Um, you, you can vote or you can talk. What you Let's let's vote then. <laughs> you don't know. I guess it's solved. So we have to now start just to replace the cables with this. Yeah, well we don't. <laughs> so but yes. <laughs> Thank you. A and B's. Okay. Yeah. In the in the mic. Thank you. I think we got a bigger problem of charges. Um, there is the very dangerous, the cheap ones. They can get in fire. A friend of my brother's half kitchen is burning down by using a cheap charger. Okay. Uh, oh, why yes. is it allowed to use that? Why <laughs> we're importing that shit? Yeah. That's rubbish. And it's it's labelized normally, but <laughs> yeah. Okay. The, um, the next uh, point is screw heads. So um, um, they, um, uh, pr pr um, manufacturers use uh, uncommon screw heads, like uh, safety crew screw heads, tamper proof screw heads. Uh, I think it's to prevent disassembly, but who knows? Uh, I, I had this screw and I had a, a Nike Fix It kit and I was like, oh, this one I have in my kit. So it's like a tree, uh, tree wing one. So I, I'm, I'm like, you have a, 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 those tools there. So to be able to open everything, we, we have to those ones. So and, and there, there is not everything. Uh, like <laughs> maybe you can do more. Um, but so I think I have the 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 the, the white one. Uh, but in fact, I can uh, screw, but I cannot unscrew. Uh, that's bad because there is a, there is a slope. So I was with my uh, this um, it was a toaster. So <laughs> there were three uh, classic screws and then this one. So I I was screwed then. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that, that's a funny one. And then uh, you have the um, well-known uh, Nespresso, uh, which is like uh, five millimeters on six millimeters. Again, I took my iFixit kit and I was like, yes, I have this one. And then I, I use it and it's so, 
you have five millimeters and six, and you don't know if you if you don't know it's the correct one because you have a lot of screw heads. So you you are trying, it's not working. Then you you try other one, and then uh, in fact you just have to move it a bit. But yeah, still you, you need uh, like a kit. And then I have um, yeah the triangular one. Those ones are quite handy, in fact. But uh, you have to the the spanner screws. So those ones are. Uh, easy to unscrew because you can just take um, a flat screwdriver and then you um, you remove the inside of it and then you have a, a, f a spanner screwdriver. Uh, I don't know the name of this one if you know it. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, then <laughs> uh, Pentalobe. Uh, it's in Apple uh, smartphones. Um, yeah, and in smartphone we have other problems with plastic clips. Um, sometimes it's glued and it's really difficult to open. And the solution, we are uh, really uh, inventive with this one. So you can use elastics, uh, you put in the screw with another uh, screwdriver and then you hope it's gonna fit. Um, you have the, the nice one, you, you take a, you, you, you take a, a, a beak and then you heat it, then you put it on, I have the, the guilty ones. Um, you, you, put, you hit it, then you put it on the, um, on the screw, you wait, uh, and then you have a handmade screwdriver. It's not gonna, gonna last long, but it's working. <laughs> then you can buy something. Um, I, for the, the one that was unscrewable, uh, I, I used uh, like a plier. Um, and then you can use the hard way. You just destroy the screw and you put a, a classic one. We let me the screw in it and then um, then screw that out. Then. But you have to most you have to reheat it. There's always not glue in it. But it's difficult. It's yeah. So this is the handmade screwdriver. It's working. Um, so the, um, the manufacturer's defense is like um, uh, they are uh, scared about our security. Uh, they want to prevent this assembly to maintain the warranty. And um, yeah, with those kind of screws, they can um, uh, yeah, have authorized people uh, to, re uh, to repair your stuff and not you. So I don't know what you think about screw heads. Yeah, I like Ace, Ace B, yeah. Thank you. Uh, a lot of A's, a, a bit of B's. Okay, so I have iPhone, but I'm not going to, to um, talk about that because I have like eight minutes left. Uh, so I'm just going to speak about the impact of obsolescence, just uh, really rapidly. But of course, you have problem about the environment. Well, we've talked about it yesterday. Impact on the population, impact on the economical point of view. Uh, but I don't want to. Um, um, uh, yeah, I don't want to to be uh, the bad news bringer. So we will uh, see how we can fight against planned obsolescence. Uh, and the idea is to get informed, uh, to compare what you want between what you, uh, instead of what you need, uh, check if you want it or if you need it. And I uh, found this uh, beautiful toaster where you can uh, toast, but you can also boil your eggs, you can uh, heat your beans and a lot of things. And I wonder if I really uh, need that because I have a pan. I don't know if you know what it is. Okay. So, yeah, it's it's useful to to think about yeah what we really need. Um, it's nice to check the availability of spare parts, even if in maybe in ten years when you have the problem, uh, the spare part won't be won't be available uh, anymore. But still, uh, you can check the repairability, and then you have nice websites when you can do that. I fix it, of course. Uh, on Greenpeace, they have um, a bit of information, and uh, there is a French website, uh, Produit Durable, which is uh, quite nice too. Um, and when you buy something, just check if the strength and the quality is okay. Just sometimes you know it's not gonna last long, so don't buy it. 
Uh, check the warranty if you have a, like a long warranty. For example, Seb in France, they are selling stuff that are uh, guaranteed like 10, for 10 years. So that's nice because you know it's gonna last at least 10 years, I hope. Um, yeah, after I have uh, good things to say, uh, it's easy to say, but it's uh, not maybe easy to do. But it, if you are aware of it, for example, consume less. Maybe if you say I consume too, uh, I consume uh, too much. It's already something. Uh, yeah, like my father said, read the fucking manual. Um, yeah, you, you have a lot of information on that. Uh, you have to think about the maintenance of your uh, devices because that's usually where the problem is. And also really easy to say, getting rid of advertising. But yeah, if you know uh, you are um, like manipulated by advertising, that's something already. Just think about it. And then you can um, do it by yourself instead of uh, buying it. You can repair, but I won't tell you that today, uh, teach you that today, because you know about it, of course. Uh, and then, um, yeah, you can reuse instead of uh, buying, of course. Again, uh, the same um, image you, you have seen thousands of times. Uh, and then, yeah, a bit about eco-design, of course. Um, if you know, you, you probably know Fairphone. Um, so they, they, they have a smartphone that lasts longer. Uh, because they have components that last longer, they are repairable, they are upgradable, uh, they have a system of reusing, uh, reuse of parts. Um, even if Fairphone is, at, is a fourth uh, edition, I think, so maybe the... <laughs> yeah, but you can repair it, you have a screwdriver with it. Um, so yeah, and other uh, examples like Framework is the same as um, uh, Fairphone, but with computers. I think it's nice, but it's not available in Europe yet, I think. Yeah, now it is. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And then uh, I've, uh, we have found a Keep It, uh, which is a brand, and they are producing a Jaren um, uh, kettle. Uh, and the idea is that it should be repairable. And it's uh, think, uh, think uh, to be um, multifunctional. So that, that's nice. And I think we will have more and more examples of uh, eco-design products. And I think that's one of the solution. And maybe you, you should think to buy those instead of classical bad products. And then that's it for me. And if you have something to say, feel free. Yes. The mic, please. The mic. It, it's just a proposal for all of us who are working with this stuff and we are finding material that has some kind of difficult repairability. Uh, if it's from a company in your own country, and even if it's not, but if it's from a company in your own country, then write them. Write them and give them a very good reputation on their very beautiful product, which uh, our user would have expected to last the rest of his or her life and ask them uh, how to take it apart and if they have the spare parts. Uh, maybe they'll answer no, but then we'll write them again and again and again. And what about the regulation? Because in a, in a clear fact of uh, obsolescence, kind of obsolescence like the printers, I think uh, uh, the regulation could also yeah. uh, play uh, play as a, as a role. I, I thought about that yesterday. Can accept everything, and yeah. it is real, real proof that it is a key fact uh, uh, of uh, of something. Yeah. The regulation should should be uh, uh, applicable. Yeah. yeah. But I, I should add that, like join the right to repair campaign, because yeah, we can, we can do stuff about that. We can force them to do things. 
It's just, a, well, <laughs> it's a very quick comment on this because actually the recall design, like you mentioned, there are plans now to regulate printers. So uh, it should be ambitious in the, if we have all of these design problem, uh, problems. Um, my understanding, you might know more. <laughs> my understanding is that for years, uh, for the printing, actually, it was up to the industry to come up with durability and repairability requirements. And for a long time, you know, this hasn't happened and the ambitious was not enough. And finally, the commission has said, now we need actual rules. Uh, so it's a uh, good news, finally. It should be the case for all products, not to leave it for the industry to decide, you know, voluntarily, but to really have the, the design more uh, durable, more repairable. So, yeah. Thank you. Now to work on it to be, to be good. Just to react also on, uh, on planned obsolescence and how to legislate on that, because like it's been, uh, we have law in France uh, against planned obsolescence, but actually like the definition currently is very vague. And uh, for now, it hasn't helped any of uh, the legal cases to actually uh, finalize. Apple did get a fine for uh, the cases where they, um, the update led to a lower um, performance, but it was um, because that affects to another uh, legal base, which, which is actually like the uh, uh, misinformation of the consumer. So it's not planned obsolescence, it's misinformation of consumers. Um, so actually, uh, the thing is that defining legally planned obsolescence, it, it's, it's very difficult. So uh, we, it's better actually to come up with, uh, with rather than, than saying uh, planned obsolescence should be banned, we need to, uh, to define legislation, clear legislation on what planned obsolescence is. And it, would probably, it probably won't be like a furrow, like uh, the first time we try it, uh, we'll probably miss things, there will be loopholes. Manufacturers will find ways to, to go around it, but at least we'll, we'll have a base. And uh, that's something I think we, 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 where we need experts, we need um, repairers to, to tell us like what, are uh, the, let's say, the features, the, the things which could apply to many products at once, because there will be uh, design features which are applied only to smartphones over only to printers, and, but we, we need uh, something we, like horizontal legislation, which will help us in terms of product obsolescence uh, tackle every, as many products as possible at once. And that's what is really tough at this moment but uh, where uh, we, we, we need uh, a lot of uh, help from uh, repairers. I mean, you, if you, you uh, it, it, uh, um, it is also the, the fact that uh, you have less repairs. Who are the repairs today? I mean, uh, if you bring uh, a product back to the place you, you, you bought it, uh, they just say that we don't have any uh, uh, repairs. Uh, they mostly say that your, your, your product is not broken. Or it's I, mean, uh, and, uh, I mean, if, yes, maybe the repairs cafes or I don't know, the, the people like that, but repairs, it is more and more difficult to find <laughs> some, some, uh, somewhere. Oh, but, but definitely, like statistically, the, profession, the number of professional repairers have, dec have decreased because of the complexity of the products. And that's why uh, through eco-design policies, uh, we, we try as much as possible to, to make it mandatory for uh, manufacturers to give access to spare parts, to give access to repair information, to, uh, to make sure that uh, certain spare parts are accessible. Uh, that, but it's not yet enough, of course, but uh, well, this legislation is uh, being developed as we speak. Like the most recent uh, piece of legislation in terms of uh, material efficiency uh, developed at CU level uh, is in force only since uh, March 2021. It's for washing machines, dishwashers, fridges, and displays. And we know that it won't be enough because there are a lot of loopholes. It's not going far enough. But uh, based on our experience and uh, on data on where there is this legislation, it was supposed to do that, but 
Um, obviously, it doesn't work, so we need to, to keep on, improve it, on, on improving it. So, so we need all, uh, all the information we can get on what legislation we need uh, for that. Because otherwise, like, we, we, won't, we can't just wait for manufacturers to make the, that shift. And, and as uh, we have limited power in terms like because of plant obsolescence, to um, to repair this stuff, like we, I see in the room upstairs, there are many uh, very knowledgeable repairers, but still there are things you can't fix. So we need to to through legislation to to make that mandatory for manufacturers. It will be tough. It will be it will be difficult to find the the wording which will uh, actually make it uh, possible and also which will prevent uh, manufacturers to design their products in, in a slightly other way just to be out of the scope of the legislation. That's what is very difficult. Like, for example, on smartphones, uh, they, um, the, what the commission has proposed, like it's, it will cover uh, mobile phones, smartphones, cordless phones, and, um, and the slate tablets, but it won't cover uh, phones which are uh, wallable. You, you know, that's a new technology. You can extend the display through a kind of a rolling system and this will be out of the scope. So basically, it will encourage manufacturers to, okay, so we will produce only that for now, because now we, then we can be out of the, of the scope. And that's where we need to say, nope, <laughs> we, we have to include all the phones, uh, whatever, whichever they are. So that's an example of how like, tough we need to be to make sure that uh, the scope is as wide as possible. Thank you. And Christina, for the, the end word, Maybe for the end word, because we're talking about regulation, how can we push legislators to do more? Um, for those who were uh, at the EU conference yesterday, you probably heard the lady from the commission saying that uh, she was representing the DG Just, they are working for consumer rights. They are going to publish a proposal on right to repair on November uh, 13th, she said. So let's be ready. <laughs> we, as Right to Repair campaign, we, we will be ready. We, uh, we will try and do our best to push them, to ask them for more. We know that many of these practices that were presented by Jonathan uh, should fall under their definition of unfair practices that should then be sanctioned at, uh, by this EU new EU legislation. And we need to be there and we need to push for more. So please support the EU Right to Repair campaign. And I think we need to conclude this yeah. session to uh, go over yeah. to the next, to over. next section. Thank you for Thank you. your attention and for your participation. And next we have the mortal sins of repair. Bye. <laughs>